I think, I know one of the questions I always like to think about is uh, how do we educate our own communities about this? Especially in being like ethnic, what do you call it? You know what I'm talking about? Where you, you cater it to a certain like demographic, what is it called? Ethnic appropriate, like ethnic appropriate things. Even if it's cancer, even if cancer is not transmittable, or even if it's a cancer that's not genetically, you know, you don't have a genetic predisposition, people want to keep that information so if someone's mute or deaf or, you know, mentally retarded, they keep all that information. And this is still really perfect. I think it's absolutely perfect for Asian culture. So the first question will be for all groups. Um, don't look at the second two questions now because that's for the next next set of questions, okay? So uh, the first question that I want everyone to discuss in their groups is what is the best way to reach Asian Americans, particularly in San Jose? This is for hepatitis B and it can be for diabetes also. So this way it gives you a chance to talk about things more, okay? So you guys have five minutes starting now. <laughs> All right, so uh, what we talked about was I think more of trying to take advantage of the Asian American resources that we already have, um, such as the World Journal, um, any Asian American radio stations that will definitely bring, um, bring some more news and more info and more resources to the local communities, especially around here because um, the Asian American population is much more concentrated. Um, we can also expand out um, campaigns towards um, ethnic restaurants and also schools Anything, anything else I'm going to be saying? Yeah, or festivals. festivals. Oh, also festivals. Um, either people can actually like make, you know, create their own festival, organize their own, or we can take existing ones, you know, such as Lunar New Year festivals, which are very popular within <coughs> our cities. And we can take that and pretty much expand off of that since most Asian Americans, you know, attend those events anyways. So, yeah, kind of. Bring some information with your mooncake. So my group had a lot of really good ideas, but we mentioned that there's going to be like some challenges within our community, especially more so maybe from the immigrant community about like the stigma about the disease. But Richard was sharing a lot of good ideas that worked in San Francisco previously, like wearing a shirt for like your campaign. And then I was suggesting that maybe like you have to go where the people are. So like try to get ads on buses where people can read it or even do like an outreach event. So, like say like at Eastridge Mall, there's like a big like bus loop like go like wear your shirt have like flyers maybe even in different languages and like approach people and be like hey what's up like talking about happy like you might want a flyer and then maybe they'll feel more like comfortable to contact you in the future like if they know what you are and then i'm sorry linda was also sharing that in san francisco they have like a focus group about like ha like what advertisements reach people because we were talking about like newspaper and radio are like really awesome ways to reach people but like what are the most cost effective ways so linda had a really awesome point of like if you can ask people like in our county like what they would listen to that might be a really good way to like reach out to the Asian American community. Um, well, we discussed, we started off discussing, I guess, um, how we should probably start young and institutionalized, like, um, you know, get into middle schools, elementary schools, get assemblies going on to, you know, just to, oh, of course, like, you know, you never listen to any of those assemblies when you're young, but um, getting out the word out so you, when you're young, you kind of know about it. So when you grow up, you're like, oh, hey, happy, I remember that back in middle school. Um, then we started to kind of get into like what we do now and peer-to-peer uh, -peer wise. Um, we discussed a little bit about maybe churches would be a good, good idea, especially in the Asian American communities because most Asian Americans <coughs> are churchgoers. Um, other than that, uh, we, we do understand that awareness is the, the key factor in all this. So maybe Chinese restaurants uh, in an Asian American sense. So. So uh, I, I do have uh, one more set of questions that I'm going to be asking you guys, and this will be the last set of questions for uh, the discussion groups. So for for these two peop uh, people groups right here, we'll, we'll call you the red team. Okay. <laughs> so so red team question: Don't work together; you have to work separately. Oh, cool. Is uh, for hepatitis B once again? What incentive does the public or you need in order to get tested for hepatitis B? Okay, that'll be your question. I, I would put it up there, but apparently we encountered some technical difficulties. So for blue team, um, I, I like blue, so I'm rooting for you guys. Um, what is the best message and solution? Keep it down, keep it down. Timon, stop talking. For diabetes, 
What is the best message and solution around the stigma of talking about health problems? Or diabetes, that is, specifically. Okay? And if you guys need me to repeat the question, I'm going to walk around and, and I'll repeat it. So I'll give you guys, let, let's say, 10 minutes. Okay? 10 minutes. This is kind of my own personal opinion, but we talked about it at some length. It really has to do with changing the attitudes and, and educating our medical community first. Because while there are many different ways that you can motivate an actual individual to get tested or to treat their chronic condition, if the medical community does not know about this, it's kind of like going to your mechanic and taking your car for a 100,000 mile checkup, but you have to explain to them, so I need you to check this, I need you to check the transmission, I need, to check, I need you to check the uh, drivetrain, I need you to check. You shouldn't be educating your mechanic about how to take care of your car, you shouldn't be educating your doctor about how to take care of your, your health. And so we really said for the best bang for the buck, or at least it's my opinion, is that we need to educate our doctors first. So that our doctors regularly say, you know, just as, as it is normal for them to say, yeah, we should be regularly testing your cholesterol and your glucose levels. If they know that you're Asian, they should know automatically that you also have a 1 in 10 <coughs> chance of having hepatitis B. It goes, and we're going to suggest that you also have a test for hepatitis B and not treat it as some sort of stigmatized disease associated with risky behavior. Um, I guess we started off saying that there was not really a stigma, like we were, trying to, we were kind of confused. We were, there's not really a stigma between uh, diabetes and people because diabetes is more of an accepted thing. Uh, everybody knows about it, or hopefully everybody knows about it. Um, actually, that's, that's also wrong. Like, a lot of people know about the different types of diabetes, but they know about diabetes. It's there. Uh, then we started talking about, um, I guess, um, certain like, kind of mix. Maybe the stigma is because in the Asian American way, uh, way or Asian families that they don't really talk a lot in Asian families. We don't really con conversate with like different like types of diseases out there or anything. Uh, I guess we're saying that maybe the younger generation, like the Asian American generation, would um, kind of start this off and talk to the family about, oh, well, maybe we should get a uh, diabetes check, we should talk about diabetes and get more aware of this. Um, then we started talking about how how to be aware of it and how to change mainly your lifestyle because most people don't know about the different types. And um, I guess the main point we had was that uh, when we're young, we, we, I guess when you're not aware of, uh, when you don't know about diabetes, you think, oh, it's just uh, transmitted through genetics. I can't get it. But then again, your lifestyle starts changing there. You're like, oh, I don't get it. I'm not gonna get it. I can eat a lot of sugar. I can do this. Um, I can live my life whatever way I want. Uh, and then you start getting type 2, and, and then you're like, oh, how did I get that? But I guess it's the more of a, like, when, to the knowledge of the different types and the, uh, the way you conversate with your family, especially in Asian American cultures, uh, that does that. Um, I guess we also discussed about um, how the different stigmas, like, you don't have to be fat or, like, big to have diabetes. And um, I guess that's another thing we talked about. Um, that's about it. I, I have no more. <laughs>